0.685. Um, just want to let you know that today I was able to do a very special, special treat. I was able to interview Brooke Noska, who was one of the producers at the Orville television series. And so without further ado, let's watch the interview together. Enjoy! <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. I'm joined today by Brooke Noska, one of the producers of Orville. Hello, Brooke. Hello. So I got a couple questions for you. My first question is, what is one of your favorite experiences while working on the Orville series? Uh, I think my most favorite experience is all the like collaboration that we get with all the people that work on it. Um, we're such a huge show and no episode is the same. Um, and you know, no department is the same either. And I think uh -huh. we like we just get to like bump into well, used to bump into like rub elbows with everybody. Um, and it was just like such a big family, and had so many stories. And there's like so many people from so many different backgrounds. So I think the coolest thing about our show is is just like how we have brought those people together and how we like successfully worked and provide such an awesome show together. Very cool. So were you a sci-fi fan prior to working on the series by any chance? Was I a who? Was I a who fan? A sci-fi, like a science fiction fan. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I thought you said like a Scott Grimes fan. And I was like, I love Scott Grimes. <laughs> I like um, Scott Grimes too. Cool. <laughs> um, I was more of a comedy fan um, than sci-fi. Okay. Um, I'm going to be totally honest. I think the most sci-fi thing I've ever been a fan of is like space balls um and like yeah, yeah, like, yeah <laughs> like a like a like a like a sprinkling of star wars um but i love yeah, comedy and i yeah <laughs> um i love it's comedy i love to laugh right. yeah it's like a free workout <laughs> very cool very cool okay so what do you like to do when you're not working on the horrible by any chance i know some people like to do cooking some like video games what do you exactly like to do um, you know, I like to eat. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good hobby that I have. Um, drinking is a second one. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it hasn't really done me too dirty. Um, no, just kidding. Um, I don't like I don't <laughs> have any hobbies. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so... I like to hang out with my dog. He's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> good company. It's probably better than some of the actual human beings too nowadays for sure. <laughs> He's definitely a little bit more snuggly, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and he never judges you. He probably just says, just love me. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little judgy sometimes. If he doesn't get the right food, okay. he's kind of just side-eyed me. Like, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's okay. Gotcha, gotcha. That's cool. Um, so who would you like to work with if you could choose to work with anybody of all these different people? I mean, some people say George Lucas, some say William Shatner. Is there anybody that you really want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Oh my gosh, Betty White is my ultimate hero. Um, I think she's oh, just like the coolest lady ever. There's so much history yes. and like, I'm sure she has like amazing stories. I could like just sit like with her and like hang out all day. <laughs> Uh, nice. Yeah, I really hope that before, like you know, the world the world takes her, I can get yes. adopted, and that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool for her to maybe on, be on Orville because I know some of us fans were saying, you know what, we'd like to see Betty White maybe as Gordon's grandmother, mom kind of type. So. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I've tried to like sneak her into so many conversations where I'm like, hey, wouldn't this be a good idea? And they're like, what? And I'm like, come on. <laughs> Come yeah. on, do it. She's an yeah. icon. She's one of our last icons. Yeah, I, I, I always like try to get her and like Cher in there. I'm like, I think Cher would be super cool too. <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah, I say, like, would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she was on Moon. R Raker. Yeah, Moonstruck. Yeah, Moonstruck. Moonstruck. That was Moonraker. not Moonraker. That's a that's a James Bond. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, so let me ask you this one that's a little bit more lighthearted. Do you believe in aliens or do you think they're real or do you think they're just something a figment of an imagination? Oh my gosh. I mean, like we're here. I can't imagine that there's like not another like 
being out there. Like, are they green uh-huh. and have huge eyes and like want to probe us? Probably not. But <laughs> I, I'm like pretty sure that there's like something hanging out out there that like we don't know about. I mean, even in our show, like we talk about how like vast our galaxy is. Like, there's no way. Like, we're just like a little tiny speck in uh-huh. like the existence. So. Of- of course there's something out now are they super interested in our tiny spec probably not but like yeah, <laughs> I'm, not. Sure, I'm sure there's more there out yep, there yep, yep. however we skip over channel saying okay i've seen this one i've seen this one so I say, do i want to go there nah. yeah <laughs> yeah no we've seen this one never mind we're just gonna drive over it <laughs> and we're like no yeah, the Stargate episode, uh, they said we were looking for intelligent life and, I, and like colonel and he'll say like uh well you didn't find it here <laughs> <laughs> Too true. <laughs> okay, so who would you say is the most practical joker on the set of Orville by any chance? Is there anyone that comes to mind that is the most practical joker of all the people? I mean, I think it's I think it's a toss up between Scott, Peter, and mm-hmm. like the dueling power of Seth and Gassar. Like, I think I think they would. Okay. I think if they were if they were like on a dodgeball team, like. Scott and Peter and then like Seth and Kassar, like that would be an interesting like little little tag. That would be a very interesting <laughs> Yeah. There's been a lot of with that. Hey, let's make this happen. <laughs> and then like I think the wild card would probably be Penny. Penny likes to sneak in there and you know <laughs> be sassy yeah. sometimes, which is always a great laugh. <laughs> Maybe the referee says, like, okay, you two over there, you two over there, and I'm going to judge who's the best of the practical joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so of all the characters in Orville, now you can say male or female on this one, is there any character that is a lot like you? Um, I want to say that I'm probably, I probably identify most with uh, Yafit. He's like Ooh. the coolest. <laughs> uh, I feel like, nice. yeah, nice. yeah. He's got a sense of humor, but he's also like secretly <laughs> smart. Um, and yes. um, in a lot of situations, I find myself kind of like becoming a chameleon and like you know adapting into <laughs> situations. And he's very you know jiggly wiggly, and he can adapt into different shapes, sizes, and situations too. Um, so yeah, I'd say Yafit would probably be most like me. Or I'd be most like him. <laughs> okay, so you're saying you're flexible to whatever you want to do. You're willing to blend into your surroundings. Yeah, and you know I hang out with a lot of green all day long. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's crazy. Okay, does green have to be one of your favorite colors? I'm just curious. <laughs> oh no, it's just because there's a lot of green screens around. <laughs> Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I have a green. See what I'm using right now is green screen effects. So I was like, you know what? Let me do this. I like the screen. <laughs> I like blue, so I said, okay, I'll go with this. Um, next <laughs> question. Which alien race would you to prefer more? The Mocklins, the Krill, the Kalon, or some other one? Which ones do I prefer more? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the Mocklins are some sexy beasts, and the Kalons are, like, <laughs> sure. kind of cool. Avina. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, I think yeah. those lands are pretty cool. Like, and, Ooh, like okay. they're, they're strong and like, they seem to be like pretty dope chicks that I could hang out with. And then, you know, it'd be like a pretty cool asset on the ship. So yeah, I think those lands are, those lands and the humans are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good at <laughs> Pretty bad, fat, and bad for a girl to say, "Hey, it's okay to be a badass girl." <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're strong too, guys. <laughs> yeah, don't underestimate. We, we may not look sexy, but you know what? We're strong. <laughs> <laughs> and check out all of our eyebrows; they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And they'll, and they'll arm wrestle you and break your bones without a <laughs> Like, okay. <laughs> next. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. What's it like when you see your name in the credits by any chance? Because I know some people look at the credits and say, oh, there's my name. There's me. There's me. See, 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 see. What's it like? Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's always exciting when it's spelled correctly. It is awesome. Um, and yeah. I, I, I get excited about it. It's, I mean, no, like, 
obviously like you guys out there in the fandom or like they you guys know all who we are but it's kind of cool to like i don't know get like our little stamp on there and say yeah i'm a part of this um but yeah i don't know the credits are always cool i feel like it's kind of like a it's a it's like a maybe that's my hobby is like watching credits <laughs> i like to see okay, who's like yeah, a part of it and like i i was yeah yes. yeah i was actually watching it was kind of random uh club dread the other day which is like what 20 years old now <laughs> um and our vfx supervisor over at fuse effects like was an artist on that and i was like is this you and he's like oh yeah that was so long ago and i was like oh my god like this is crazy like you were doing club dread and now we're working together on this like so I, yeah I, the credits are super exciting and important to me because uh, that's everybody that's like made it like it's not just what you see on the screen it's what's behind the screen too um so yeah. So you're like saying it's the, whole, it's the whole village basically that brought it together. Basically. Yeah, everybody works really hard to get like a couple frames on the screen, and I feel like that should be noted. <laughs> of course, because you guys work so hard on these things. I know that. <laughs> we, I do. we do. When I do like gaming kind of things, because I'm working on an independent gaming project, and when I see my name in the credits, like, yeah, that's me. See, 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 see. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, um, what would you say is your main title for working for the Orville crew and everybody in case somebody was wondering what it is? Um, yeah, so I'm the, I'm the VFX producer and then I'm also a co-VFX supervisor. So I get to dabble my toes into like the creatives just a little bit. Uh, and obviously we have two awesome uh, VFX supervisors, um, Brandon Fayette and Eric, um, Eric Hayden. And then we have a comp yeah. supervisor, uh, Adam Rothstein, who is like my my best buddy. Um, and so me and Adam kind of team up together to like kind of put a finer magnifying glass on the shots. Uh, and, and Adam or um, Eric and Brandon are kind of the overall creative gurus to creative gurus. put this sucker in space because spoiler, we don't shoot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but <laughs> Yeah, but, I did yeah. a freelance interview with him. Yes, he's so nice. I like him a lot. Oh, yeah. He Me. Also, really. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say is one of your most challenging things to do at your job by any chance? Um. Well, I love, like, I love managing. Um. I love, like, I love doing puzzles. And I think my team is probably one of the larger and most expensive teams uh, on the show because we there are so many shots. Um, and just kind of being a part of that process of being able to manage the internal team, but also like our vendors and then also being like a puzzle piece into the production and pre-production and making sure that everything all together gets packaged up with a sexy little bow by our team. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's the most challenging part because it is such a large show. Like I, no joke, we probably have the most visual effects shots in like any television show ever. Um, like mm -hmm. even, I think I was looking at some stats that like Batman, um, Dark Knight only had like 1400 shots and that's like two of our episodes. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so. You guys are like up here, they're all down here. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if you look at it, like we you know we're making an hour's worth of content you know, uh -huh. multiple episodes. So um, the most challenging part is like keeping my sanity and making sure that all the places, all the pieces are in the right place. Um, but that's also like uh -huh. the most rewarding part is like when an episode airs and you like successfully check off everything and like rip that post it down and tear it up. You're like, yes, I did it. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. <laughs> okay, cool. So what was a typical day like before the shutdown happened exactly for you? Yeah, I mean, a typical day would, uh, you know, wake up in my apartment and uh, end up on a set all day and then go back to my apartment and sleep and then do it again. Um, <laughs> uh, it was a lot of a lot of meetings, a lot of in-person meetings, um, mm -hmm. and just a lot of like, I don't know, strategizing uh, about like what what was happening on set that day, what was going to happen throughout the week, what was coming up, what needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also like digitally building assets, you know, making season three even bigger, badder and better than it was last season. Um, and just like, how mm -hmm. are we gonna do that? And then also a lot of just like um, behind the scenes, like me and Fox and 
Seth and everybody's just kind of talking about like where, where we are time like timeline wise and like budgetarily, which mm -hmm. is like a huge, <laughs> obviously a huge yes. part of like, it's, it's all fun to make, but it all costs something and it has to, you know, air at some point. So, um, so right. yeah, just, just a lot, again, a lot of just like moving the pieces around and hope that they come out in the wash looking great. <laughs> And you know, on awesome. time and under budget. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without them saying you're in the red, you owe us money. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes a red alert. <laughs> Not even nope, behind the scenes. No, no, red alert is bad. Red alert is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get anybody standard, whether you're on a spaceship or you're a crew member. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's yep>. Alrighty, um, do you have a personal favorite of all the episodes from season one or two? And if you do, which one is it? And why is that one your favorite? Uh, between one and two. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I think season, I mean, season two is near and dear because that's when I was brought onto the family. Um, uh -huh. And obviously like Emmy nomination battle is freaking awesome because that's yeah. like, that that's crazy um yeah, yeah i mean Yay. like did we think that we were gonna be dragons no but like the idea was nice <laughs> for the couple of months that we were like oh my god like mm -hmm. we're in the final five with game of thrones and star trek and like we're with all these people like that's so crazy um i know people are always like oh it's an honor but like it really is and it really was an mm -hmm. honor to like be named out of you know hundreds and thousands of people that do this on multiple 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 shows um to be recognized and like ha like you said like have your name in the credits like having your name on a piece of paper that says emmys like that's crazy um so obviously yeah the battle is near and dear to my heart um but i do think that the first episode of the season with um Bordis's uh, Sex Lagoon was pretty hilarious um, uh, because <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time my parents watched the show and they were like, what are you working on? And I was like, you have to wait and see. And they were like, we don't know. <laughs> like, so, I can't explain it. You have to watch the show yet. Yeah. And everybody's like, what? What are you looking at? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really funny because that was supposed to originally be the second episode but that was too close to Christmas. And they were like, we're yeah. you gotta, like, we just have to get this one out of the way just in case there's families together. <laughs> so it became yeah, the first one. Christmas, but we don't want for Christmas is an extra for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I'd say episode eight battle, all, everything that was tied to that experience and after it aired mm -hmm. was freaking amazing. Um, and yeah, it'll, it'll always be a highlight memory in my career. <laughs> Very cool. So do you have a favorite prop item of all the items that have been on the show? If so, which one is it and why? Um, um prop item. Oh boy. Yeah. I don't it, know. It, 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 <laughs> it, the stun gun, the guy's news, it could be like I said, almost anything. <laughs> Even yeah, um, this guitar. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, there is like I mean obviously like yeah it's my man um he when we were on set we have like a we have a stuffy and it's basically like a green um like bean bag that we just kind of put in so that okay, he's so there that. Okay. yeah and i it's so funny because sometimes he, and he like he has like a mouth um so sometimes he just like ends up places and you're kind of like does anybody else see that he's like on top of the crafty area? Like, so I just think he's kind of like a, he's kind of a fun guy that we use on set, but also like brings cheer off the set too. <laughs> he's just a cool I, little guy. I mean, where's Waldo? What is Yaffin edition? <laughs> <laughs> yes, where's Waldo Yaffin? I like edition? it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I, That's just, also what I, thought. I should do that as a DVD feature. Once. Like, where's Yaffin? The Orville edition. Yeah, it could be like one of those uh, like kids books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or a DVD feature. And then if you click the right spot, then you get a special bonus. Bit, like, a, I don't know, a blooper reel or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like <laughs> Norm MacDonald's such a cool guy. Yoff is such a green little stud. Like, he's he's got to get more FaceTime, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we've only seen him in his face one time, I think, when he was doing Claire. And I was like, okay. Who is that talking about? Oh, that's Yasin. That's what he actually looks like. 
Yeah, it was funny when this all when the shutdown all happened, we were trying to figure out like, well, how are we going to keep on going? And I was like, what if, hear me out, we do an entire like from Yafit's POV of the ship because he's all digital and they were like, absolutely not. And I was like, all right, well, I tried. <laughs> Aww, that was worth a shot. That would have been a fun episode. Fun yeah, episode. Like, <laughs> like, like nobody's there. It's just Yafit. So it's just like, you know, like he's just like roaming around like yeah. hello and then he like parties on the ship by himself so yeah that's that's <laughs> my life was... of <laughs> Sans crew. yeah and he's like oh i guess i like missed a holiday or something so he's like just hanging out and like he goes on his right, own like exactly. little adventures i think he'd be a great spinoff for like maybe an animated would. That would be fun, a little family guy with the point of view of uh stewie for the day and everything like that so yeah we should do that for the app let's make a Folks, yeah, but he's a whole day to sleep for his day. Because we always are wondering, how does Yafit sleep? How does Yafit eat it? What does Yafit do? <laughs> we need more information. More Yafit, please. <laughs> okay. So, how would you describe it, the Orville series in your own words? If somebody were to say, "Well, what is exactly Orville? Why should I check it out?" Obviously, you work on it, but why should I check it out? Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, you know, the Orville is a, it's, it's exploratory, not only out in space, but within its crew on the ship as well. Uh, you know, you're exploring all these different like corners, nooks and crannies of like places that we've never been, uh, whether it be scientifically accurate or fantastically, fantas fantastic, fantasyly accurate, <laughs> fantastically accurate. Um, so like you're going all these really cool places and a lot of like a lot of the places that we go to, like we we reach out to NASA, we reach out to uh, Andre Bormanis, like we reach out to all of our like space friends and we're like, would this be something that exists? And like, so all the things that you guys are seeing are things that are potentially um, out there. So I think that it's really okay. cool that um, like we're not only exploring out into the galaxy, but we're also exploring like the different relationships that everybody has, whether, you know, wherever you work at, um, you know, personal or otherwise in your home, which happens to be also on a spaceship. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's mm -hmm. not an external and internal explore, exploring um, with a hint of comedy, a couple of fart jokes and like some serious hard hitting things that like we should talk about, but like nobody really wants to talk about, but if you like, you, you can like, you can get it. <laughs> Very cool. I like the way you described it. But that's cool that you guys get to team up with NASA and some of that. So do you actually talk to them, like, say, via Skype or Zoom and say, hey, we're doing this episode. We want to create, say, like, a black hole or a planet that so-called just disappeared and lost its moon. How did Yeah, I, yeah, um, I mean, like, we had the most awesome opportunity to go to, um, to, like, the Houston headquarters, which was super cool. Um, and wow. we got to see the astronauts um, and they like did this really cool, awesome tour. Kayla is awesome over there. Um, and everybody was like, oh my God, like you guys actually, like you guys actually like put some thought into like what you're doing out there. And we're like, yeah, we should do that because science is available. So we should utilize it. Um, like we're not yes. Harry Potter, it's not all magic. <laughs> No, um, exactly. That's so, the force move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we we use a lot of uh, JPL um, research, and then again, Andre Bormanis is like such a wealth of knowledge, and he has he has so much information yes. on everything and anything that you could ever need. Um, and so, yeah, we just do. I mean, coupled with a ton of research and a couple of just like asking some random questions without giving too much away to all of our friends over in the scientific realm of the world. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we got some connections that are pretty interesting and mind blowing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm sure Seth likes that too, because I've heard that Seth loves science and stuff like that. So I'm sure he's probably geeking out all over going, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, and even Seth is such a wealth of knowledge too, because he works, you know, with the crew over on Cosmos, which is Neil deGrasse Tyson. And so, you know, it it's really cool to see all the different, I guess, shades of Seth, uh, <laughs> because you know everybody kind of knows him as like the Family Guy guy, but there's like this real, true, honest to God passion for science and explore exploration, 
um, mm -hmm. that like, you know, would I think would be sloughed off in, in any other like way, but because he's integrated into like who he is and what he does and kind of what he stands for, I think it's really cool. Um, and a lot of people are interested in it because he's interested in it. So I think that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that is cool because I, I mean, I, I obviously am kind of a nerd and everything myself. But the thing is, when I found out about Cosmos, it got me more interested into it. So I can definitely say, thank you, Seth. You introduced me more and more into science where I was curious more about it and to find out, is this scientifically possible? Because people say, well, what's the speed of Orville? And I'll Google it up and everything. And they go like, you're so fast, girl. And I go like, thank you, Orville, for helping me <laughs> nerd out of yeah, yeah. No, we definitely do a lot of fact checking on like what is being written versus what we're showing, just to make sure that we don't get caught with our scientific pants down. Uh, because Lord knows we get something wrong, and we're like, oh no, we do not want to be up on the. Uh, yeah, you don't. On, be, you don't be going home. Going, yeah, no, we don't want to be on trial with Twitter and all of our fans for messing it up. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, do you offer any input or on any of the episodes, the characters, the setting that have made their way into the final edits? If so, which ones were they by any chance? What? Sorry. What was the question? Like, do you offer any input? Like, say you wanted to make, say, show Yafit on the TV episode and everybody's like, hmm, I hadn't thought about that. And then it actually makes its way onto the final show. Oh, Have yeah. There's been, been there's been a couple things that I've like pitched <laughs> and then they like make it all the way through it I'm like yeah I did that um yeah I mean I think I mean for most part our our job in visual effects is super like you know everybody has a piece of the cake uh everybody's you know providing their input and their ideas into it uh, which is what makes it so great and collaborative um, so it's not like I don't get credit for like, oh my God, the Mocklin secret planet is purple and blue because I wanted it. It's like we all we all kind of provide different um, feedback and research and images and kind of just like input into things. Uh, there is an episode this season that I was able to kind of take artistic lead on. So I'm excited that maybe that'll make it all the way through and uh, hopefully it'll look super cool. <laughs> Nice. So we hope to look for that. Then hopefully as soon as we can get the A-OK -okay to start watching. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we can make it, it'll be great. <laughs> yes. So what is one of the craziest rumors that you have heard about the series or anybody, the cast and crew that has actually made you laugh like crazy thinking that's so ridiculous. That's obviously not true. Um, I mean, I think the most recent is um, like how we're canceled, but we're not. Oh. <laughs> Like how, season four, yeah. like how season four, yeah, like how season four is canceled, even though we haven't even finished season three. So like, I mean, who knows, exactly. honestly. I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just I so don't funny know how many people that. Tell you guys have just hit the pause button. You guys have just hit the pause button. You're not canceled. It's still going on. Wait, yeah. let season three <laughs> first, and then we'll worry about season four and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there have been times where I've like on in my in my career, I found out that like shows are canceled, and then like I find out on it uh, about like on a Variety article, and I'm like, oh, are we not working? And they're like, oh yeah, no, we're done. I'm like, oh okay, great. Well, thank you guys for letting me know. I'll see you guys later. Um, yeah. But yeah, this one, this one was kind of weird and odd, and um, yeah, it was really it was really interesting. Uh, my favorite part of it was the fandom coming. To bat and being like what no you guys are stupid mm -hmm. um but yeah i think it's always funny how some people that make and um like release these rumors that are like wildly mm -hmm. um fake and not like <laughs> they're just not true at all um how then the arg like i think the most interesting and like funny part is then reading like the arguments that are being had mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. we the show don't know what's happening to our own show right now um, and like how they have more information than we do. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, <laughs> let me, yeah, uh, let me, you let got me just pass this right off to you then. <laughs> That's true. Cause I kept saying, well, what's your sort? Because for one person, I kept asking the person, I said, cause I love to write and everything like that. And obviously it's always key as a writer. What's your source material? I said, what is your source material? What is your source material? And the person kept saying, it's true. It's true. I'm thinking, well, who are you talking to? 
Who's yeah, named, yeah, named we want to know too. Like, who are you talking to? Because like we're talking to each other, and like we don't, <laughs> we don't think it's true. But like, uh, I mean, who are you talking, who knows? talking to? Now Smith, Jane Doe, who is it? I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's always interesting. It's always interesting to see, like, like those kind of rumors are like funny and kind of like well, okay. Well, I guess if you know more than my job, then like cool. Um, but I think the other like not as like potentially harmful version is when people uh like when people get arguments about the episodes um because of like what a character does or says and i'm always very mm -hmm. interested to see like why people say x y and z like why like why will why will bordis never sing or like why does Claire and Isaac like why is their relationship gonna fall apart like they're very invested in these characters um yes, they and are. I guess because I see them outside of character sometimes I forget that like they portray this like thing that everybody like only everybody sees is like their character they don't see like the behind the scenes of like hey Mark mm -hmm. like what's up How, how's like how's life uh <laughs> So it's always interesting mm -hmm. that like, you know, like, oh, Bordis would never do that because blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, oh, right. Cause he's Bordis, not Peter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, they don't associate them as two separate identities. They associate yeah. just one of them. Yeah. So it's always interesting because, because we work so, we work so closely with the actors and the characters that it's always interesting to kind of see that like the people that don't have the behind the scenes, like what they think and like, even sometimes like potentially like what we miss. Um, and then there have been times where we have gone back and been like, oh no, like we forgot that, you know, this person's an asshole. We can't put them <laughs> like buddy buddy <laughs> in the next scene, like crap. Um, so there's definitely been some changes because you guys have eagle eyes and uh, you guys are the best fandom ever, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we're very meticulous because there's some things that I will catch on there. Like I didn't realize until I was rewatching it again. I and I hear Ed Mercer mention Nancy Drew. I said, "Holy crap!" <laughs> You're mentioning Nancy Drew, and I love Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a lot of times where somebody's like, "Oh, I see all these like production uh, mistakes," and I'm like. Well, actually, oh, yeah, like, yeah. that's a real set. It's not even green screen. So what production mistake do you see? So it's, I think it just goes back to the, like, it goes back to, like, I've watched this, these episodes, like, a hundred plus times by the time you guys see them. And so it's always funny to be like, oh, well, I have a good eye for, like, mistakes. And I'm like, okay, well, you're wildly wrong. But whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because obviously they're not paying attention. They don't realize that you guys are actually there and you know for a fact that this is a real set or a real place. Because obviously there's not a real mock list, obviously, but obviously certainly you know there are real places and stuff so that you yeah. know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So would you consider yourself laid back or are you bossy? Um, I I feel like I'm pretty laid back. I don't know, but I can I can be a boss because I am. So <laughs> I'm I'm very <laughs> yeah I'm very uh, I'm fired up for my team success. Um, so maybe sometimes that comes off as bossy because we do work really hard. Um, and so whenever you know obstacle gets in our way, where somebody's you know doubting us or not giving us the tools that we need, um, I definitely can <laughs> pump it up to a 10 and be like, you have no idea how hard these people are working. Like, please help us. <laughs> um, uh -huh. So yeah, I've definitely like taken a couple, taken a couple on just for the sake of like, we have to deliver the show and my team matters to me. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Very I, don't cool. I don't think that's bossy though. I think that's just doing my no, job. That's just <laughs> On your ground, knowing your authority, how to hold your <laughs> ground. <laughs> okay, great. Um, is there anything that you would want to change about your job? If you could change anything, or you just love it the way it is? I mean, like, if this pandemic could go away, that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. No, I really like my job. Um, I think that it's one of the few like gigs in the industry that isn't ever the same depending on what show or even episodes even in the same show that you're working on um you know like uh -huh. there is no cookie cutter day in the life of a vfx producer it's always super different um 
And uh -huh. we are one of the few, sh like few departments and people that get to see the full entirety of the show. We are there from basically conception to screen. Um, you know, we're there, we're kind of helping nerd out when it's being written to make sure that X, Y, and Z matches, you know, the physics of the ships and the planets and the, you know, the, the species that we've put into the show and kind of what we help build um, and kind of just like to prep it for post when we are asked, you know, heavy hitting questions like, well, would this do this? Um, and then, yeah, and then we're on site for shooting. And then once everybody's done shooting, we're still there hanging out, <laughs> delivering them. Uh -huh. So um, it's such a cool spot to be in. You get to meet and work with so many people. Um, yeah, I mean, and you just like, everybody wants to be your buddy because <laughs> we're the ones that are gonna make it all come together in the end. So everybody wants to look right. good. So whatever they can do, to help us in the back in the back end is always you know it's always great to be a part of those conversations and um you know all the planning so uh yeah i think i wouldn't i mean less stress and more sleep would be awesome but like who who, who has time for that <laughs> yeah what stressful, exactly what is is stressful yeah they're all stressful so yes <laughs> yeah i mean i'm not okay, saving so lives what? over here so i can't complain like I, i'm just making tv yeah. show. <laughs> Exactly. So what are you looking forward to the most once this pandemic ends and you guys can go back to work? What are you looking forward to the most? If that is it? I, I, I don't like getting out of my apartment would be nice. <laughs> um, making sure I fit in my clothes would probably be second. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, I miss seeing everybody um, because I feel like, like it's weird that I basically like have an apartment that I spend like 25% of my time in and I spent 75% at work. Now I'm spending 100% time mm -hmm. in my apartment and work. <laughs> so it's like really weird. Like I, this is probably the most time I've ever spent with like my family and significant others because I'm always at work. So now that I'm at home and at work, I'm spending time with both. And it's kind of a weird like, <laughs> like trying to say, separate it. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah, but it's been really great because we are remote. Um, you know, I can I can go up to the Bay Area and hang out with my family um, and like make sure that they're doing okay. And then I can come back down to LA. Obviously, like driving super safe and like sanitizing everything that I touch because um, you know my car needs more alcohol on the steering wheel so that I don't catch it. Um, <laughs> so as as long while you're driving. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's definitely been a couple of times where I've like mistaken like an alcohol wipe as like a tissue and like wipe my face and I'm like, oh, oh no. I'm like, well, I don't have it now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been really, it's been really interesting. Um, but I don't think I could be a hundred percent like comfortable working like this forever. Um, it it right. has its pluses and it has its minuses. Um, and um, yeah, at least like physically being at work, you're like, I'm at work. This is my work time. Now being at home, you're like, and I, I don't have kids or anything like people that have children and like, all like all that stuff like you guys are the ultimate heroes like i'm just over here like looking at my dog making sure he doesn't poop on the carpet like <laughs> so i'm just like trying to get off of meetings to like go take him outside and then like come back um but it's definitely you know trying to separate your work environment from your home environment when your work environment is in your home environment um i i look forward to the day to be able to kind of separate those again uh and see people with you know their smiling faces and welcoming hugs maybe i don't know i'm a hugger person so maybe everybody else yeah. has decided that i don't have to hug them anymore <laughs> yeah the elbow bumps they ain't cutting it i mean where i am on the east coast i'm like oh i don't like the elbow bumps because it's, like, it's kind of the old fist bumps that we used to do in high school and stuff or something I'm like ugh, that doesn't feel right yeah but i am excited for hopefully safer like working like working environment right. like i there's like now it's like, oh my God, you sneeze because you had a tickle in your nose. Everybody's like, go home. Whereas before it was like, yeah, but can you just like stay a little bit longer? Like we know that you're sick, you don't feel good, but like, can you just like, so I'm hoping that the, uh, like the health and safety that's come out of this um, is, is kept within the working environment so that people do 
like they don't feel bad for staying at home because they have, you know, a cold or the flu or anything like that, because every, because right. like, even if it's not this virus, it's some sort of virus that could potentially, you know, get back out there and the, the flu can shut us down and it, that's been around for a bajillion years. So um, I mm. hope that that's what sticks, but I really do miss my little space family, <laughs> even though I see most of them every single day. Um, I, I okay. miss just like seeing everybody and uh, I don't know, having a real reason to take a shower other than I'm just bored. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just going to go out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, gotcha. Um, one last question. I didn't have it on my list, but it came to mind. Um, we all know about the Orville fan base game. Did you play that by any chance? Oh my gosh, I played one of the first like releases of it, the beta version. Tom was like, "Hey, like check this out," and I was like, "This is the coolest thing ever to hit the internet." Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Um, I unfortunately haven't had time recently to dig in there right. and check out all the new stuff that you guys have, but I like have notifications set for any time you guys like release anything. Um, the Halloween thing is so cool. So I love, I love kind of just being like a backseat watcher, I guess, and like seeing mm -hmm. how cool everybody else is experiencing it. Um, hopefully when I have more time, I can jump back in there and check it out. But I've definitely hopped onto a couple um, like Twitch situations with uh, Egotastic Fun Time and um, just like, all oh, it's so cool. <laughs> Um, but yeah, cool. I'm a huge fan of you guys and um, uh, the fan film, the fan series is so cool too. Uh, we have so many talented artists out there that just, you guys are keeping us relevant and alive, which is like, we cannot thank you enough for doing that um, because we know that we've been off the air for so long. Uh, pandemic is not helping obviously, but um, yeah, you guys are just, you guys are just the coolest. <laughs> well, you guys are the coolest. I mean, you guys have so much content and it's only fair that we give back something that you've give, been given to us. So I think it's only fair that we, <laughs> we do something for you guys. Uh, well, we appreciate you guys so much. Um, and yeah, no, we always, when when we were on set, we would always be like, oh, hey, like, have you seen what this has been, like, who who posted this? Like, you guys might not physically see, like, you know, the likes or the comments, but like, we talk about it within the office all the time, um, just because like, you guys are talking about our show. So of course, like, we have to talk about it, but it's, mo <laughs> it's like, it's like 1% like, oh, sketchy. And then like 99% like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like we have the best fan base ever. Um, yeah, you guys are just so cool. <laughs> you guys are so cool. I mean, that's the way I feel like whenever I see a notification from one of you guys, I get, oh, what are they gonna talk about now? What are they teasing us next? <laughs> so I get so excited. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously Tom is the king of uh, social media, like in keeping everybody up to date on what's happening with us. Um, and he does such a great job to like, make sure that like you guys are getting what you want from us and we're making sure that, like, and he's making sure that like, we know like what's happening. So he's such like a great keeper of <laughs> all of us in social mm -hmm. media wise. Um, and yeah, I get a lot of really good laughs from stuff so that some stuff that he finds, um, because I honestly, I, I don't even know how to get into Reddit, but there's some pretty good stuff on there. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. <laughs> He's great. Um, and he gives you guys so much content and you guys are so great to him and with him. And yeah, he's, he's like the glue that keeps us all floating together. <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you so much, Brooke. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for coming out for this lovely interview. It's been so much fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Well, most of the time, anytime. <laughs> anytime that you're not working, right? <laughs> anytime that we're not super busy, but this worked out perfect had a little bit of a break right, and it was awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with me and Brooke Noska, the Orville Ooh. producer. And this was so much fun. As you can tell, we had a lot of laughter together. We had a really great time. So thank you, Brooke, so much for watching our videos and also agreeing to do this fun little interview telling me some fun stories and fun things about you and your experience with the Orville and everything. So it was really great talking with you. So thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Those of you that were watching this interview with me, 
I hope you enjoyed this as well because this was a lot of fun learning about Brooke and learning about a little bit more about behind the scenes things that go on with the Orville cast and the crew that it really does take a village to create something so magical and wonderful. So thank you, Brooke, for this. I appreciate that. And if you guys want to check out any other things that I have on my channel, please check them out. Without further ado, this is Alicia or AVP signing off. <laughs>